Just a few weeks ago, two students, Nakia Jackson and Kelsey Johnson, shocked the math community by proving the world's most famous math equation ever, a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. There have been more than 350 proofs of Pythagoras' theorem. So what made Jackson and Johnson's proof so astounding? Let's first look at their proof, why it proves Pythagoras' theorem, and why it's such a groundbreaking result. Let's first draw a triangle with side lengths A, B, and C, and let's label the angles as alpha and beta respectively. And what Jackson and Johnson did was a really really clever insight about the ideas of trigonometry. They first copied and pasted this triangle. They made an astute observation that by the law of sines, sine of 2 alpha divided by 2a is equal to sine of beta divided by c. And they wrote this particular equation. But by the definition of sine, it is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which simplifies sine of beta to b over c. We can simplify this to get sine of 2 alpha equals to 2ab over c squared. And we're going to save this observation for later. Their next clever insight was to observe that by interpreting sine 2 alpha as opposite over hypotenuse, we needed to create a right triangle with opposite over hypotenuse. We're going to draw a line perpendicular to one of the diagonals and extend the other diagonal. This allows us to create a right angle and all we need to do now is to calculate the opposite over the hypotenuse. However, how do we go about obtaining the opposite over the hypotenuse? What is the opposite and what is the hypotenuse? The next amazing insight is that they could put a bunch of triangles in what they call a waffle cone. If we were to draw a line perpendicular to the base of the two triangles, the angles formed by this triangle will still be alpha and beta respectively. And what they did is to repeat this one more time, and one more time, and one more time, and one more time, and so on and so forth. For each pair of right angled triangles, let's label the sides by Ri, Si, Ti, and Ui respectively, where I denotes the ith pair of triangles, and this pair of triangles will keep repeating itself in shape, although it's getting smaller and smaller down the waffle cone. From this perspective, the opposite will equal R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus so on and so forth. And the hypotenuse is going to be C plus T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4, so on and so forth. Based on the diagram, we have a bunch of similar right-angled triangles. This means that the ratios of corresponding sides must be the same. In particular, R1 over 2A must equal to C over B. Doing a little bit of algebra, R1 equals to 2AC over B. And the rest of the analysis will happen inside the waffle cone. Using the same reasoning, we obtain two more similar triangles inside the waffle cone. The ratios of the side R1 over S1 must equal to T1 over U1. We can clean this up with a little bit of algebra to get T1 equals to U1 over S1 times R1. But we get another pair of similar triangles, which tells us that the ratio U1 over S1 must be equal to the ratio A over B. And we can draw the next layer of the waffle cone and obtain the exact same reasoning that R2 is A over B of T1. T1 in turn is A over B of R1. That gives us R2 being equal to A over B all squared R1. But we don't have to just stop here. We can go to the third layer, the fourth layer, the fifth layer, so on and so forth. At the i-th level, R sub i will be equal to A over B all to the 2i minus 2 all multiplied by R1. And similarly, Ti is still going to be equal to A over B of Ri. All that remains is for us to calculate the opposite and the hypotenuse and simplify their expressions. We're going to plug in all of the different Ri's into the expression. This is actually a geometric series with common ratio A over B all squared. And since A and B were the base and the height of the right triangle respectively, we drew it so that A over B 
is less than 1. R has to have modulus less than 1 as well. This means that the geometric series converges to the sum to infinity, the first term, over 1 minus the common ratio. We can plug in R1 equals to 2AC over B, and we can clean this up with a little bit of algebra to obtain 2ABC over B squared minus A squared. We can likewise calculate the hypotenuse, which is arguably even easier. Let's plug in all of the TIs, and let's factor the A over B. What remains is just the sum for the opposite. So we can plug in our formula for the opposite into the expression and clean up with a little bit of algebra to obtain a squared plus b squared times c all over b squared minus a squared. This tells us that we can write both expressions as b squared minus a squared times opposite and b squared minus a squared times hypotenuse respectively. But by that same principle, we can divide one equation from the other and we get opposite over hypotenuse on the left. On the right, the c's cancel out and we get 2ab over a squared plus b squared. By what we saved just now, this is precisely equal to sine of 2 alpha, which by the first fact equals to 2ab over c squared. But since the fractions are the same and the numerators are the same, the denominators must be the same as well and that gives us the famous Pythagorean theorem. What was astounding is that we used trigonometry to prove Pythagoras' theorem. In most situations, we are using Pythagoras' theorem to obtain trigonometric identities. And on the flip side, many people try to prove Pythagoras' theorem using this identity. But that's circular reasoning. You cannot assume what you're trying to prove. What Jackson and Johnson did was prove the Pythagoras' theorem without this circular logic. They could define the trigonometric notions independent of Pythagoras' theorem and then use these notions in trigonometry to prove Pythagoras' theorem. While Jackson and Johnson weren't the first ones to prove the Pythagoras' theorem using trigonometry, this proof that they did come up with is completely novel. But I think it's just fascinating that two high school students could piece together the pieces of the many areas of math that they've learned. Trigonometry, similar triangles, algebra, and even the geometric series. They brought in all these different ideas to prove the Pythagoras' theorem in a completely new way. This is the power of mathematical thinking. Kudos to Jackson and Johnson for their astounding achievement. To see another instance of mathematical thinking in order to obtain the password for some Wi-Fi connection, click on the video on the screen here.